If you're a carpenter or a framer or a builder, you definitely will recognize this as a shear wall. Some of the giveaways are the nailing pattern. So we've got three inch on center nailing pattern, plywood on the wall. Many people recognize it as a shear wall, but they don't know what a shear wall is for. So a shear wall is to prevent the building from turning over. You don't want this wall to turn over or to rack. Stiffens the wall up enough that it's not going to rack unless, well, you have a really excessive force. But what most people don't understand is how a shear wall is actually anchored. And we're gonna get into that today. Oh, we've got some Simpson Strong Tie HDU 5s. Now, the HDU 5s, I will admit, are a little bit of overkill for this project, but we couldn't get our hands on HDU 4s. And technically, we didn't even need HDU 4s, but we had a small change, which I'll show you down below, that uh, kind of forced us into upsizing. But Simpson Strong Tie HDU 5 comes with this washer, this special washer. Depending on what you're getting, it comes with all the screws required to anchor it. You supply the threaded rod, you supply the nut. No additional washer necessary. This just has to be finger tight when you install it. And some of you may even be familiar with having a threaded rod embedded in concrete, whether it was uh, wet set in epoxy or set during the pour. What a lot of people don't know or haven't seen is how we anchor it from floor to floor. And this again is just one example of how we will anchor this floor to the floor below. You have to remember that it's not just this metal connector. It's the sum of all these parts. The plywood, in this case, the LVL studs, connecting down through the floor diaphragm into another wall. Let's go check that out. We've got our HDU down into the floor. That goes right into the concrete footing. Up above here, you can see we've got another HDU, the threaded rod, anchors the one above. So we're under there above, flip it down, ties together. By the time the OSB or plywood goes on this side of the wall and goes on the side of the wall above, it creates basically almost a monolithic wall that's tied together all the way into the footing. Now the reason that we upsized our HDUs, uh, even though it's deleted now, typically you would see HDUs at either end of a shear wall, but we had to move our HDUs in slightly. Uh, can't see it here, but there was plans to have a hose bib right here. That got deleted, so uh, we could have avoided this if we had known that ahead of time, but sometimes things happen for a reason. But either way, HDU 5s, one, uh, one of the many options for anchoring down your shear walls in a high wind environment. And occasionally from time to time, we do see a little bit of wind. It's not bad right now, but we've already seen a few uh, wind events and we're just getting started in our windy season. Pretty sure we're gonna see some more weather yet while we're on this build. Don't be concerned about the slight angle on the threaded rod. Right in the Simpson literature, it allows you up to a five degree angle on your threaded rod and still meets all of uh, the different pull and hold down requirements. Doesn't change any of their load values. Sometimes in framing, things are not perfect and whether this is an issue with how the holes were drilled or whether this is an issue of maybe this stud should have been on this side of this stud, 
We don't know, we're not gonna find out. This still works, it's still gonna meet all of our engineering requirements. We all know water is the killer of buildings. Radon is the killer of people. So this four inch pipe is our radon pipe. We're basically passively depressurizing the entire under slab of this lower level. So there's basically a four inch perforated pipe that travels out, goes through the footing over there, tees off, tees off around here somewhere, and basically it's passively pulling air from underneath the slab right up through the roof. Now on this project, up here you can see our four inch pipe isn't totally connected yet. And the reason for that is our plumber's actually going to put a pressure test on this pipe. We're gonna ensure that the pipe itself is actually airtight. Um, that takes a little bit, but it's an important thing to, it's important to do and uh, ask me how I know. <laughs> The reason that we want to have a pressure test on this pipe is we've actually had a radon pipe leak. Now, most people would think, well, there's no water flowing through this pipe. How, how could it possibly leak? But we live in a high wind environment and underneath the, underneath the slab, basically underground, is always going to be a low pressure environment. But at the top of the roof, if you have a 100 kilometer an hour wind, a 60 mile an hour wind, there's quite a suction. So it's gonna actually draw all of that vapor underneath the slab straight up through the pipe. So eventually you have condensation in this pipe. And when you have condensation, you have water. All of our pipes are graded in a typical fashion for any other type of drain. And if you have enough condensation, you can have a leak. So we've covered that under warranty at least once, so now we're making sure that it doesn't happen again. Some of you may be aware, some of you may not be aware, but depending on which stats you read, radon is the number one cause of lung cancer in non-smokers. Uh, there's some other stats that say radon gas is the number two cause of lung cancer, but either way, it's something you should be prepping for on a new build or in a major renovation. You definitely wanna make sure the system's in place. Locally by code, we don't actually currently have to passively vent this. All we have to do is the under slab prep and stub it up. We could cap it off here, but it literally just makes sense for, you know, probably $300 worth of pipe and a little bit of labor to go up through and actually passively vent this.